If you ask somebody about their experience of their self, they usually define that or describe that as being an individual inhabiting their body. <laughs> well, I think the self is an illusion, but uh, you have to define what you mean by an illusion. And for me, an illusion is not that there's not, no experience, but it's not what it seems. And that's what I'm challenging. The idea of this, this individual, this integrated character, is something which I think is, is questionable. Well, I don't think we actually create the self as such. Uh, it's evolved. It's not, it's not as if we can create our own self. Uh, it's just a process of the brain to generate this experience. So the mechanisms which generate brain growth are a combination of the intrinsic biological mechanisms to wire up, but then those wirings and connections are shaped through experience. So the experiences you have can actually mold you and determine how you end up as an adult. Your vision or your hearing or your low-level perceptual experiences are very dependent on the environment. But I think the same also applies for those mechanisms which actually control who you are socially as well. If you look at very young children, they're the focus of all the attention in the social environment. It's very child-centered. But as they get older, they have to learn to integrate with siblings and peers and other children. And so they have to learn a set of skills which enable them to interact effectively with their peer group. But as they become more sociable with other children around, they start to be more concerned about what others think about them. And so a lot of their behavior becomes what we call Machiavellian. They're trying to maneuver and manipulate and establish where they are in the pecking or to be more uh, popular. Because nobody wants to be uh, an outsider. No one wants to be at the low end of the rung. Nobody wants to be excluded or ostracized from the group. For humans, our preoccupation is to be accepted and to be accepted and to have status and to be valued. Because who we think we are and our self-esteem is really a reflection of what we think other people value or think about us. So we're constantly trying to get approval, we're tr constantly trying to be accepted. Uh, it's just in our nature. And then of course as they go into adolescence and teenage years, they have to develop all those sort of social skills to do with reproduction. And attraction. Uh, and so they're entering different phases. So the self is changing over the course of that initial childhood period as a reflection of the environment that they're in. So every parent thinks they can shape their child, and they can to a certain extent, but what they underestimate is the influence of others around us. So that's just a natural reflection that as we become less child-centered and develop into a more social animal, we have to learn to kind of pay attention to what other people are thinking. And so we're more concerned uh, where we are in the pecking order. We're concerned about status, we're concerned about self-esteem, we're concerned about how we are viewed by others. And that preoccupation with what others think uh, increases as we, as we get older into adulthood. And it motivates and drives a lot of our behaviours. So if you raise a child in a very abusive uh, early environment, that can have profound long-term consequences. If you impoverish the environment, the self by definition should also be impoverished. And the richer that environment, to a certain extent, well, the more uh, variable the, the picture of the self will be. There is a, a genetic component that we get, you know, children tend to be like their parents. Uh, they inherit the same sorts of temperaments. Uh, and babies are very different right from the very beginning. So we're not completely constructed by the environment. But we bring to bear upon our genetics, our biology, our interactions with the environment. So it's a combination of this sort of aspects of our temperaments, our information processing, those are the things that we inherit. But the way that we shape ourselves is really the combination of those factors working with all the experiences and events which lead to our decisions and, and shape who we are. So even if the self uh, is an illusion, and let's just assume it is, I don't think we should get upset by that because I don't think we can escape illusions. Even when you know that something is not what it seems, it doesn't reduce or remove that experience. So I don't think we need to be too anxious about it being an illusion. And also I think the fact that we, if we consider ourselves as being constructed or dependent upon others, then that's a very, uh, I think, valuable exercise because then we can be less sort of concerned about why we don't do as best as we would like to. So I think it makes, it's a liberating experience and we shouldn't be scared by it.
Ik ga ze net verzenden. De vreemde mensen komen op ons te 